today about HTTP2. Uh, how many of you have heard of HTTP2? All right, good, good. You're doing your job as well. Uh, how many of you are using it in production right now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. This is going to be this is going to be a fun time. So, uh, if you, it sounds like it looks like a lot of you have heard of HTTP2. Uh, but if you haven't, or if you haven't learned a whole lot about it yet, um, then these are kind of the highlights in the highlights that I want to talk about today. There's actually quite a bit to it, uh, and, and the spec is a thrilling read, I assure you. But number one, uh, it, the, fi the fundamental thing about HTTP2 is that one connection can now support many requests. So whereas in the past, you've had to open up a connection for every single resource that your browser needed, now, for a given host, you can open one connection and send multiple resources over that connection. Number two, and I'm going to focus a lot on this uh, today, is server push. Uh, server push is what we have long known of as inlining. So you can imagine that you have a resource that you know is critical to displaying content above the fold. Uh, in, in the HTTP1 world, you might send that as an inline style sheet in your HTML. In the HTTP2 world, they have put that at the protocol level and said, we're going to allow servers to say, I see you wanted index.html. Maybe you would also like main.css. Number three, uh, HTTP2 exposes a way for clients, such as browsers, to express the priority of a request. So a browser, rather than having to make decisions about when it should send a request and maybe sending requests in a certain order, Browsers can send requests, clients can send requests all at the same time and just indicate in the request how important that request is. So again, you might say that CSS required to display something above the fold is super critical and uh, you know, some JavaScript for a carousel that's further down the page is less important. Right now, only browsers, um, the browsers don't expose this ability to you, a developer. But it's not a far-fetched that they might. Right now, it's just the browsers expressing that priority. And finally, an important thing to know about HTTP2, uh, and un contrary to what you may read in some articles, this isn't for nefarious reasons. This isn't Google trying to like corner a little bit more of the internet. Uh, HTTP2 in browsers requires HTTPS. Uh, I, can, I don't have time to explain why, but it's for very practical reasons that browsers communicate over HTTPS when communicating the HTTP2 protocol. So long story short, uh, HTTP2 is designed for the web that we have today, not for the web that we started out with in the, in the late 90s. And this is exciting. It's, it's a whole new way for us to improve the performance of our websites and of our applications. It's also very useful way beyond the web application space. Any service that communicates over HTTP, HTTP, HTTP can benefit from this. Um, but on the, in the browser especially, this is a really game-changing thing where rather than combining and minifying all of our small module files into one big file that we ship over the wire, it might make sense, it probably does make sense for us to start breaking that up into smaller units of functionality because now we don't need to open up a bunch of different connections, which is really expensive over a high latency connection. We can just open one connection and get 30 files, get 100 files. Um, so this is exciting, and when I started working on this talk, I thought that you know, I'd be showing you some waterfall diagrams, um, how HTTP2 makes everything so much faster, and how HTTP1 is actually really sad when you look at it in comparison to HTTP2. And along the way, I talked to a lot of really smart people uh, who have really found themselves frustrated with their efforts to learn about the, the reality of HTTP2 and uncertain about its benefits. I, I admit I was feeling kind of uh, not so bright <laughs> sometimes when I was learning about HTTP2 and feeling, um, feeling like this, this just seemed hard and I'm, I'm used to figuring out hard things, but this seemed unusually hard and I was feeling bad about myself to be quite honest. Um, but I talked to a lot of smart people who were having the same kind of experiences as they were trying to learn about HTTP2. And I realized that what I want to talk about today is that there's a lot that we don't know about how HTTP2 is actually going to work. There's a spec, and it's like, cool spec. 
but, but the surrounding ecosystem has a long way to go before I think that you know, everyone in this room can just understand and participate in HTTP2. So this talk isn't about the great performance improvements you're going to see with HTTP2. Um, instead, it's really an attempt for me to catalog some of the open questions I have about HTTP2 and um, a few things that I think the, you know, maybe people in this room, maybe vendors could do in order to make this a better situation. So my first question is, how are servers going to support HTTP2? The spec doesn't really, the spec is a spec. The spec says that this is how it works, but it doesn't say this is how you do it. This is how you actually implement the spec. And I talked a minute ago about server push, and this is an area where, uh, where it's really unclear how servers are going to support that. There's an article that a, a server author wrote uh, and had this quote in it saying that implementing push is really challenging. Uh, and, and he seemed to, the, the author here seemed to be of the mind that uh, servers need to have this one size fits all like magic where they can just, you know, read some tea leaves and figure out what files they should be pushing. Um, and, and in reality, you know, Apache and Nginx have come out with HTTP2 support, but they've just said, oh, I don't really know how to do this whole push thing. And um, this, is, this is bumming me out. There are some other servers that have said, you know what, we, can, we don't have to solve this in a one-size-fits-all like, magic calculation of what I should push. We can let an application express what it should push. So NGHTP2 and H2, uh, NGHTP2 supports um, actually sending a header along um, to NGHTP2 that says, please also push these resources. Uh, H2O is another server. None of these are JavaScript, so that's a bummer. Uh, H2O is another server. That, uh, they use something called Casper, Cache Aware Server Push, which is enabled by cookies, where uh, the messages that come from the browser attempt to say, this is what I already have in my cache. And then the browser can figure out, or the server can figure out what it should send. Other servers have demonstrated an idea that I'm really into. Um, you know, the link headers are cool and uh, the cache magic is cool, but this, a couple of kind of toy servers have an idea that I think is a lot more powerful. And that's for, uh, for an application to specify a manifest uh, that the server can read and the manifest can express the relationship between resources. And so the manifest says, when you get a request for this file, I want you to also send this file. And it does it in a declarative way that could be baked into the server. So the server isn't trying to figure this out with every request it has. The server has kind of baked in ahead of time. When I get a request, I know I'm going to have to send these things. So how are servers going to support HTTP2? This is kind of an especially push. Uh, it's, it's an open question. And um, my biggest hope is that they aren't going to support it, not support it, by just kind of throwing up their hands and saying, this is hard. That quote that I showed was a little bit alarming. Um, so uh, it's kind of this, it's not entirely clear how big the value is of push, but it's kind of an open question still of whether we're even going to get to use it um, if we also want to be using tools like Apache and Nginx. The next question I have, and this, is, this got me really bent out of shape, to be completely honest, uh, is how are we going to visualize what HTTP, how HTTP2 is working? How am I as a developer, as a front-end developer who's used to looking at waterfalls, going to understand how, uh, how this is actually working in the browser. I set up a little uh, uh, test app. This was using Node Speedy, Servit2, which I showed a couple slides ago, hadn't come out yet, which is sad because it's way easier to use than Node Speedy. I set this up using Node Speedy, serving the HTTP2 protocol, not Speedy. And it loads um, a whole bunch of jQuery, uh, but it also loads another file on a 200 millisecond delay. Um, but through the power of HTTP2, the server actually pushes that file that will be requested in 200 milliseconds. So when the server receives a request for index.html with that uh, query parameter uh, tacked onto the end, it also says, I know you're going to need this JavaScript, let me just send it, even though you're not going to want it for another 200 milliseconds. This is cool. This is exciting. And especially if you can send this request with, uh, like, the, the, if the server can be intelligent about, I will push this, but I won't push it at the cost of sending something else that you need. 
And this is really exciting. What's not exciting is this. This is what the waterfall looks like in Chrome for, for this. So even though I know that I pushed this back when, my, uh, back when I sent the HTML, that very first request at the top, there's this tiny little sliver of a bar approximately 200 milliseconds after the HTML loaded where Chrome says the network traffic happened for that request. And this was so confusing to me that I ended up trying, I don't know how many HTTP2 servers, ended up like compiling Nginx on an EC2 instance to try and figure like, what am I doing wrong? Well, I'm not doing anything wrong. It turns out that the Chrome network tab isn't talking about the network at all. <laughs> um, and this is sad, but if you dig into Chrome's net internals tab, which is just a wall of text, then you can actually see that the push did start at 96 milliseconds. And all the data was at the browser at 366 milliseconds, but it wasn't until the push was accepted that Chrome DevTools shows it on the waterfall. So more like back here is where the push actually happened, but Chrome doesn't show us anything about this. Um, so yeah, the, the network tab doesn't show the network. And this was really confusing to me trying to understand how this worked. Firefox has its own uh, kind of set of troubles here. <laughs> um, here's the same page being requested and down at the bottom you can see that Firefox acknowledges that something happened with combined JS, but it's not really sure what. Um, you know, we don't know if it was a 200, there's no network traffic for it. It looks like maybe this request just like died on the vine, um, but of course that's not what happened. So I, I, like I said, I was so <laughs> flabbergasted by this that I actually wrote a tool to be able to parse that net internals wall of text and turn that into a really sad looking waterfall diagram. Um, and if you look at this sad looking waterfall diagram, you can see uh, that the push does indeed start way back here. And that's long before the uh, other resources start getting sent. That, that wall of, um, that straight line that you see there is the other JavaScript resources getting sent. They actually get sent long after that push has started and just a little bit before that push has completed. So how will we visualize HTTP2 connections? Um, I hope that me showing, you know, this is obviously possible, um, will move some of this into DevTools. I know when I showed this to my colleague Andy Davies, he uh, took it upon himself to compile Chromium, bless his heart, and uh, started trying to figure out how to actually put this into Chrome. Um, and so I, I think it's really important that we have these visualizations because the people I think are most likely to champion HTTP2 are people who are front-end developers and they're accustomed to being able to understand how their application is working through tools like this. And, and a wall of text is, it's not helpful for anyone, but it's except at a debugging kind of level, like did my frame get sent the right way? Uh, but it's not helpful to anyone for understanding how the whole of how an application is behaving. Um, so I'm really hopeful that we're going to see better tools for visualizing this and, and a network tab that's really about the network and maybe another tab in DevTools that is more about how the application received the resources, parsed them, and the time that that took. My last question, and, and this is, a, you know, those other two things, they're going to get solved. I feel good about that. I feel like there's a path forward for that. Um, my last question is a bit trickier, and that's how will my app work with HTTP2? How do I change how I build you know, the assets for my application in order to get the benefits of HTTP2? And this, this could be a talk unto itself, so I didn't try to do that in 18 minutes. Um, but I did write a whole blog post about just kind of thought gathering about this idea of how do we actually take an application that might be hundreds of JavaScript files do we send hundreds of JavaScript files over the wire now because of HTTP2? Probably not, and people who have tried have not had good experiences. Even the people who wrote the spec will say, oh, I don't know, you guys figure it out. Um, and, and so this is an interesting post to read just to kind of think about this, this topic. I, I have some ideas about how we can structure our builds to take advantage of HTTP2. Um, but it's, it's very different. And the other thing that's interesting is, do we continue to support HTTP1? 
Do we do two different builds for them? Support for HTTP2 is actually pretty great in browsers, but it's not 100%. And it's way more than everything but old IE um, who don't support HTTP2. And so how are we going to serve those two types of users? Uh, and the answer may depend on the nature of the application. It may be that we say, you know, this application, we know that most of our users aren't uh, are going to be on a modern browser, and so we're just going to decide that other folks will have a bad experience. Uh, other applications, it may be really critical that you support both really well. And it's also, also kind of an open question, is how do you measure the difference um, between the HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 situation for your app? Right now, HTTP, HTTP 2 ifying your application just for the sake of you know, doing some comparisons requires a healthy amount of setup, and it's set up that people who are traditional front-end developers, it, it might be outside of their comfort zone to do that, and that's another thing that I worry about is that, uh, again, front-end devs are likely to be the biggest champions of this, I think, but the mountain they have to climb in order to learn about it and understand it is, I, I fear, going to scare some people off. Once we've figured out the optimal way to build, uh, to you know, create the assets that we want to deploy, um, we have to actually deploy them. We have to actually put them somewhere. Now, you may be um, serving everything directly from your own server. Don't do that, but you know, some people are. Uh, plenty of people are. And now we have to think about how is it going to impact my server that it has to process 10 requests instead of one for this application. We're sending 10 JavaScript files instead of one. The server is actually handling all that traffic. I saw on servers that I was running locally that, uh, yeah, it received 10 requests, but it was still only processing, it was sending data for one or two at a time. And so there's server optimization that may need to be done in order to, uh, in order to take advantage of this. Um, if we're serving things from a CDN, uh, go you, um, except, <laughs> CDN support for HTTP2 is really sad right now. Um, it ranges from utter silence to, um, on the best side, Cloudflare just recently announced that they're supporting um, HTTP2. But again, there's no real server push story here. And, um, and that's, I'm hoping maybe they can also take a manifest driven approach. Uh, but that's a huge open question about how CDNs are going to support it. And until they do, I feel kind of stuck because we use CDNs. Even if I do an HTTP2 build, if my CDN can't support it, I'm actually making things worse. Uh, so I see a lot of value in tools that help us figure out how to package up our application. Uh, and a lot of values in, a value in tools that make it really easy for a community that's used to working in the browser uh, to rapidly understand what the difference and what the benefits are, not making them spin up a whole uh, environment and includes an SSL certificate like deployed on a box somewhere. Finally, I feel like this matters not just because I had to give a talk and fly to Paris, which is pretty cool, but uh, also just because, you, again, I've said this a few times, members of the front-end community are among the very most likely to champion HTTP2. And it's not nice to say, HTTP2 is here, let's optimize, when the ecosystem to support those developers isn't there. And so I'm hoping I've said my piece and that is gonna resonate with people in this room who are probably very capable of developing some of these tools and also with the vendors who stand to benefit a lot from people using the internet more, which they will when it is fast because of HTTP2. I'm Rebecca Murphy, thank you.